what did I do? Got it. Um, hmm. Okay. Hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> ah, you? can you let me see? I need some voice. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Yeah, okay, I can okay. hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay. Good. 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 Yeah, so how are you doing today? Good, good. Well, okay. okay. Yeah. So, hello, <laughs> my pride and joy. We have Josephine Jacques with us today. And, oh uh, gosh, she looks so beautiful today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Trying. Um, and grab my notes over here. Um, Josephine has a new book out, The Blessings of Quarantine. Discerning yes. your hidden purpose during a time of confinement. Yes. That's, mm -hmm. Wow, that sounds like a very interesting book. Tell us a little bit about it. Okay, yes, okay. So um, when the pandemic started, you know, like everybody else, I was going into a little panic. <laughs> As I would, you know, what is going on here? Where is that world going? And um, started to get, you know, really a little depressed about it. So I am a Christian, and as a Christian, I try, I tend to read, to, to read the Bible whenever, you know, something is going on with me. I go to the Bible and see, is there an answer about this in the Bible? Is it the end of the world? What's going on here? So I went back. Okay, gonna have to read the Bible again. <laughs> so when I started reading the Bible, I was really looking for something that has to do with disease. Maybe you know, how do people deal with um, a virus in the Bible? Is quarantine in the Bible? That those were really the questions that I was asking myself. But when I started reading, and I'm like finding stories like Noah in the ark. I'm like, huh, this is like a confinement for Noah. They're in the ark. Yeah. <laughs> for, I, I don't know, for some reason, I always thought they were there for 40 days because I'm like, it went for 40 days. And in my mind, it's always been 40 days. So first time I realized it's not 40 days. They were there for 371 days. <laughs> like, oh my God, really? <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I came up with the idea of finding more stories once I found no one. I'm like, who else was confined and for how long? So I ended up finding, and then I uh, used some imagination, like with uh, Jonah, I have a quarantine of Jonah in the belly of the fish. I have uh, Daniel quarantine in the lion's den. I have Lazarus quarantine in the tomb <laughs> and then also Jesus quarantined in the tomb so I picked up on stories like that and decided I was gonna write about it and then I was gonna write why did this happen and uh, what were the lessons for them and then what are the lessons for us Very like good. I knew with Noah I was like they were in the they were in the in the ark and he was the on well he, his family was the only family there. He was there with his sons, two sons and two daughter-in-laws, and then the wife. So that would make like six people in that boat. So I have a lot of questions in my book because I'm like, I don't know the answers, but I have the questions like, you know, what how did those women get? along <laughs> living under the same roof <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and then uh, you know what were they doing and then how did they cope with the animals all those animals being there I know people some people love pets but then you know like people like me I don't really like pets unfortunately I'm like I don't know if I could <laughs> Deal with them, how are that, you know, so maybe I'm like, maybe God was teaching people who don't like pets like me or two. But <laughs> that's actually a really animals. good point you brought up because because you've so got I, but, these yeah, people living there. Because during yeah. the pandemic, you know, yeah, we had to make a lot of adjustments, you know, like some of us um didn't have time for our family members, but now we, you know, the husbands and the wives, they never really saw that much of each other. 
<laughs> and I've heard of some stories of people. I mean, really, this is the first time they're getting to spend quality time. But then for some people, it wasn't that good because, you know, they ended up with more arguments and stuff like that. And, you know, they ended up with a divorce or they ended up seeing a counselor. You know. <laughs> so anyway, my book is more geared towards good, you know, the good that happened. You know, like, you know, how, yeah. So yeah. I'm not yeah. ignoring that we had a lot of losses. You know, people have lost jobs. People have lost family members. Loss of finances, loss of careers, but then I looked at the gains. Like from being home, a lot of us have gained. You know, we save some money for the, on, on gas, <laughs> <laughs> and then we save time for not traveling back and forth to work. And uh, and I looked at you know like exercise. We use the time to exercise. I have uh, I have Daniel's. Uh, Quarantine, by the way, I have it as a quarantine for healthy habits. So because I because of the way that Daniel always ate it well. So I'm like, did we use any of that time to eat well? Because you know, we have the time to cut those vegetables. I know sometimes people buy the vegetables, but they never cook them because it's like I don't have time to, <laughs> to cook it and make or I mean to cut it and make it. I know I'm always struggling to make salads for a few days because uh, I don't want to be cutting <laughs> lettuce every day. So things like that. So that did give us more time to be able to eat healthier and maybe to exercise when we, not, uh, we didn't have to drive to, to work. Some of us, most of us. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's the ideas behind my book. Good, and, uh, good. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we know where the idea came from. That was one of my questions. Um, yeah. So now you, you have this pandemic is kind of going away, but right. it sounds like there's still a lot of value in your book for how we can apply this to our lives even today. Right, right. So I, you know, I, and also in Daniel, I talk about the fasting, you know, a lot of people now are fasting for good health and as a lifestyle because uh, research has shown that uh, that can help our metabolism to lose some weight and things like that to stay healthier even uh, arthritis a lot of people are claiming that you know they are doing better from arthritis from fasting so I am like, you know, all these stories <laughs> have given us ideas on different things that we could be doing. Yeah, and uh, I have us um, like on Jonah, Jonah being in the belly of the fish, I was like, what, what was God trying to teach us there too? It's like Jonah was a rebellious prophet because God wanted him to go and uh, spread the gospel to that country, but he, he thought those people were too evil. So he's like, he judges these people that they're not worthy to be saved. They're not worthy. They should just, God should just let them perish. So I, I associated that with uh, the fact that we still deal with people who are prejudiced with the gospel. Some people who want Reach the gospel to certain people because they're like, okay, these people already, you know, I already judged them. They're already not good. They're not <laughs> but it's really for everybody. So I, uh, I thought that uh, came along at a time when we had the uh, uh, struggles with different races, like, you know, the Asian and then the blacks and whites. So I, I address some of those issues in the book also. Uh, you know, we are really all under one planet and the virus did not discriminate. The virus didn't say, okay, I'm just going to kill this bunch of people and then <laughs> leave the other ones alone. It's all over. It's a global. So that's showing us that we all share, you know, that... Uh, the genes of humanity, we are all humans, we are, no matter how we look, we might have different colors, different facial features and different hair, whatever, but 
deep down inside, we're all the same. And whatever happens to you, you know, affects me as a human being. So I have a lot of, you know, little lessons that way. Uh, that was, uh, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, the justice, social justice and everything in yeah. the book as well. That's yeah. good. There's a lot of variety in there. So you, you have 15 uh, characters from the Bible? I have 15 All characters. 15? 15, yeah. So I know you said you like Joseph and his dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that yeah, was just yeah. incredible how he could spend all that time and it's like how did he do it without getting sad or depressed or upset right. or, you know I mean right. don't yeah, it's I easy at, to see he was upset and, and he did I the, looked he at, yeah that, I but, looked at his story as a story of courage that he had a lot of courage and uh, he was uh, I looked at him as coming from a wealthy family because uh, that's what the bible said this guy had to work 14 years to be able to marry uh, Joseph's mom. And he had acquired a lot of wealth. So he was a wealthy man, but he loved Joseph because Joseph was the first son of the wife that he loved because he was tricked into marrying <laughs> the older sister that he didn't like. But uh, uh, so the older sister is always was having all those children. But finally, Rachel had a child, and uh, that was Joseph, the firstborn. So when you love a woman, I guess you love their children more. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was really I don't know. But you know, but he had him in his old age too. I address that in the Bible. I mean, in in real life, a lot of times when people have kids or the youngest kids, sometimes people tend to have more affection for them than all the have. So, yeah. but the brothers were jealous and they did that trick and pretended that Joseph died and father thought he died and all that. And But then he was never dead. He was in Egypt, but it meant a very uh, good uh, reputation there would not touch that woman who wanted yep. <laughs> and all that. So it, it, it really yeah. uh, did well. I like it, what you had said about them. Um, you know, the characters were confined. You talk about how they coped. You talk about the positive yeah, purpose. Cool. And do you talk about the outcome of all of that, you know? They, they have their purpose that what was the outcome overall for each of them? Yeah, well, the I would come for each of them. It's like, like, like Joseph, for instance, uh, and he even said it uh, that his brothers had met evil towards him, but God used it for a good purpose because. Yeah, because it's from him being in Egypt, he was able to interpret the dream with the gift of interpretation of dreams that he had. He was able to interpret that dream for the king that there was going to be a big famine and they were to save crops so people would not die from the famine. So that's how he saved not only this, the people in Egypt, but people were coming from neighboring uh, countries to buy grains from Egypt. And uh, that's how they were able to, uh, to, to survive. So if he wasn't there, so because I look at it too sometimes, you know, when you have a child and you spoil them, sometimes they really don't have good coping <laughs> skills and yeah, they, they, sometimes they don't point. take for themselves because you spoil them you take for them all the time but uh joseph if he had stayed back you know with dad the way that loved him and all that maybe you know he would not really have had all that uh, coping mechanism and all the, the thoughts on how to solve problems that he had acquired from being in a foreign country, foreign land. Yeah, so that's one thing. And uh, I know sometimes people are upset with God too, was like Noah. Well, it's, people, yeah, people can be upset. They're like, well, why, you know, did God let everybody perish except for Noah and his family? 
And I'm like, don't be upset because you are probably no one's descended if you're here. <laughs> mm -hmm. So your ancestors did not perish. <laughs> they came from no one. <laughs> Yeah, so that means you were chosen. If you were here, you were chosen. Um, so, but anyway, I guess, yeah, with Noah's uh, story, it's like God wanted to, uh, to start a new start a new world. But I, I look at now, though, we see a lot of evil happening in the world. So I feel like that, given, that gives us a perspective on, on, on I mean, if you believe in the end of the world, I know some people don't believe, but sometimes I feel like Noah's uh, story gave us a, a, a perspective that it might really happen. Yeah. And it was a preview of what's going to happen uh, with us because um, some people would be in that ark that now Jesus is the one who's got the ark and it's, it's good to get in his <laughs> ark. So we can be uh, preserved from whatever will be coming uh, in the future. So that's one of it. And uh, let me see which other story I talked about. Oh, and Queen Esther. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, this one, I call it the quarantine of beauty. Because uh, Queen Esther was a young girl often. And uh, probably beautiful, but she was not, you know, well maintained because she was her parents were gone, and and I don't think the uncle who raised them or the cousin who raised them had that much money. But anyway, she was uh, in that palace, and she did undergo a beauty treatment. <laughs> <laughs> she did. For a year, yeah, before she could be presented <laughs> to the king. So I kind of use that to say, you know, um, sometimes we don't we don't think that God cares about beauty, but I mean, <laughs> but that girl, you know, to be presented to the king, she had to go through all that. So I don't think God is against the people who want because I. I I see sometimes people, you know, we talk bad about people who go for a facelift or do this or that. And go. <laughs> but I don't think God is against that. And I feel like God was well pleased with us, keep taking care of ourselves and, you know, mm -hmm. using all the science. I mean, I'm really not against science. I feel like God is, has created science so we can use science to, to, to perfect things. So I do love that story of, uh, of Esther going to the, the, the makeover, I call it. <laughs> so, and during the pandemic, I did get some Botox treatments myself for my <laughs> forehead, got some wrinkles out. So uh, I feel like, you know, this is one thing that we could have been doing, we could do a makeover. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's real good. Yeah, instead of going into depression, sometimes it will go to depressions because of things that they could change. I mean, if you know the wrinkles on your forehead is making you depressed, and if you can afford the little Botox, then go get your Botox. That's fine. I don't feel like there is anything wrong with that. So, <laughs> so is this the first book you've written, or have you written other books? No, that's the first book I've written. Yeah. And hopefully I write uh, more books. I got more ideas. <laughs> I've always written, um, I've always kept journals. Though. Yeah. Since I was a little girl, I've always kept, I, I like to keep journals about different things. When I travel, I like to travel. And I, when I travel, I keep a journal of what I see in that country, what is different and what's the same. I always look for similarities. That's one thing I always try to look for unity in things, you know, like, and then I always look, you know, always ask questions. Why do people do, do this like this? People from this country, why do they do this, this thing this way? And why do people, other people do it that way? So I'm always comparing and I love exchanging. That's the word exchanging 
I, I agree with yeah. you. I haven't traveled that much um, out of country, right. but mm -hmm. but when I go somewhere, I like to to interact with the people that live there. I don't want to just be a tourist. I want right. to get into their lives and and see right. what it's really like for them and um, not just mm -hmm. the surface part. So I agree. Right. You should write your journals. That would be an amazing book of your travels. I would definitely read that. <laughs> yeah, it would be good too. Yeah. So uh, from the time I was 16, I'm originally from Haiti, by the way, if you wonder where my accent is from. So I moved to the United States when I was 18. But uh, before I moved to the United States when I was 15 and doing high school in Haiti, we had a program where we could have pen pals. Oh. So I had, yeah, so I kept seven pen pals. Yeah, I had pen pals from Africa, from the United States, from Canada, from France, from India. So I had pen pals all over from the time I was 15. And that my whole thing was I need to know what, you know, what, <laughs> how are people living in your country? You know, what do they eat? How do they dress like? <laughs> What do the children do when they go to school besides learning how to read and write? And you know, so we, yeah, so I, I, I always enjoy that. Oh. And I have had the uh, opportunity to meet some of my pen pals in person. Yeah, I've met um, my French pen pal. I was in France, and then I met my pen pal from Finland. She came to the United States and I was able to meet her. So yeah, it was a great experience. And my French pen pal actually, we still communicate now on Facebook. We're on Facebook. <laughs> we went from That's awesome. <laughs> we went from writing to Facebook. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, that is that's yeah. great. I mean, Facebook does does help connect people all over the world that we wouldn't yes. have been able to do otherwise it's, it's exactly excellent tool for communication excellent right right yep so so not to get off of your book a little bit but kind of okay. uh -huh. so as you're traveling to different places um you know people are starting to travel now what are maybe some some tips you can give people to to think about before they go somewhere yeah, well, personally, I'm still wearing a mask. <laughs> so that's my number one thing. Yeah. And uh, I always had like colds and allergies uh, during those seasons. But uh, since the pandemic and I've been wearing a mask, no allergies, no uh, colds. So I feel like those are protecting us in a way. So I would tell people to keep wearing a mask if they're traveling. Yeah. To, you know, to kind of, yeah, at least keep that. So, <laughs> yeah, so keep I would, huh? mm -hmm. Sorry, I would, I would want to know. Um, so say, I've never, say I've never traveled. Um, mm -hmm. What would be one of the first things I would do? Okay, I've picked a place I want to go. Um, how do I know what to do when I'm there, find a hotels, what to, what to look for, what to stay away from? Oh, okay. Um, well, for, I, I go on tours sometimes. So when, yeah, so the tours they will give you, uh, you have the opportunity to have tour guides to take you to the places that you that are more famous in the countries that you're traveling. I've gone to some trips alone, so those. But a lot of times, I always have friends in the in the countries that I travel who would direct me to on where to go, uh, shopping and whatever, and then. Um, and I'm a nurse and I've always uh, believed to like if you're traveling outside the United States to make it to the travel clinic and see if there are any immunizations, any like, like they have malaria there, if I need, yeah. So I always bring medications with me for uh, if, you know, and they'll end up with diarrhea or something like that, like antibiotics. Idea. <laughs> and, yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah, and bug spray. 
<laughs> so um, yeah, so I, I think that those are good ideas. They still stand, still go to a travel uh, clinic and see what is more predominant there and what you should health precautions you should be taking. That's a yeah. really good idea go, doing it as tours because that way you're still with a group of people. You can see mm -hmm. things on your own, but um, you kind of get to, uh, you know, hear what other people are seeing too. And right, and right. Their viewpoint, they're like, oh, did you see this or did you see that? And, and right, right, yeah, that's right. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they can read your book at night while they're relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, you always need a good book to take with you. <laughs> yeah, I always take books with me. I always read in the airplane, and uh, and I make made some connections in the airplane. Sometimes you will wonder, well, what are you reading? You know, you look, <laughs> you look lost in your book, and I'll share books sometimes. And, yeah, <laughs> points people that was some good books that I've read. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. Uh -huh. So, where can we find your book right now? Where is it at? Yeah, so my book is on Amazon. Um, so, the blessings of quarantine. If you type it, you'll find it. My name Josephine Jacks. I do have a website for the book, uh, except that I'm not selling from the website at this time. It's uh, called Fountains of Success that come so you go to www.fountainsofsuccess.com uh, you'll find the book there but uh, I am not selling it there might be a link that says I sell it that I need to remove by the way because I don't <laughs> want anybody to start ordering from there but I'm it's on Amazon right now and I appreciate reviews because uh, the reviews might be might help me uh, make it to a best-selling status for Amazon or something. So. <laughs> Tell us about your website. My website, uh, so what, like what do you want to know about the website? Um, what was it like, called again? And then, then oh, the, oh, purpose. it's called Fountains of Success. Yeah, so yeah I always purpose? love fountains. Yeah, I always, yeah, it's, it's fountains with an S. I always love fountains. I've always been fascinated by any body of water, waterfalls, fountains. I always, I've always had a fascination for those. So that's why I call, I decided to call my company, my book company, Fountains of Success. <laughs> I wanted to succeed. <laughs> it's kind of a prophecy on myself. I don't want to fail. I want to call it Fountains of Success. <laughs> so that's what. Yeah, that's where the name came from. Cool. So, so is it just a website for your books, or are there other things on it? Um, no, it's just for my book right now. But I'd love to have add books? other books to yeah. it in the future. Yeah, it's just a book oh, company good. for now. Yeah, good. I am a family nurse practitioner, so I do run a little holistic clinic where we do a lot of prevention and health style, um, um, healthy health style, I mean, healthy lifestyle behaviors. So uh, that's called fountains of health. So as you can see, I'm really into the fountains. It's called fountains of health. <laughs> <laughs> so I went from fountains of health to fountains of success. Yes. I, I am always surprised how fast this half hour goes. So already yes. right towards yes. the end. So yeah, yeah. so your book is called The Blessings of Quarantine, discovering yes. your hidden purpose during a time of confinement. And right. you talk about 15 characters from the Bible and you mm -hmm. talk about their confinement, how they coped with it, the positive purpose and the outcome of that. Then you have right. have your website Fountains of Success. And then what was the last website you said? It was Fountains of? Fountains of Health. Fountains of Health. Awesome. Yes. That's yes. wonderful. Yes. So go to Amazon and buy Josephine's book and, <laughs> and mm -hmm. go to her websites and see how she's doing. I thank you so much for coming today. This was really fun. And thank fun. you for inviting yeah. me. I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it so much. <laughs> I'll, I'll put the links in, in the Facebook chat there and um uh 
I just want to thank our audience for showing today. Be sure and go out and get her book and and uh, go see her Fountains of Health if you want to learn more about preventative preventative care is some of the best care out there, I believe. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll see my pride and stay later. And and thank you for being with us today. And see if I can get my stuff to work here. <laughs> thank right. you for inviting me again. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. When you're ready for your next book, let me know, and we'll talk about that one too. Okay. 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 Sure. Thank you. <laughs> All righty. Bye bye. Oh, okay. Bye bye now.